Hi, welcome back. This is Joe Rabel. So uh, in today's show, I'm going to start out with a lesson as I always do. And uh, today I'm going to talk about something that I think is really interesting because I'm going to combine some key things in MACD, ADX, and RSI. I haven't really done this in any of the lessons, but I want to show what I would call, I almost want to refer to this as sort of like a home run fat pitch where everything is just lined up. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the lesson and then we'll get into the individual stocks after that. Okay, so I've got the chart of salesforce.com CRM up. And uh, what I want to show here, I'm mostly going to focus in on the weekly time frame here. Uh, I've got two different weeklies, and this has the RSI set up, um, and this has MACD and ADX. All right. And what I want to show here is how we can use the RSI in conjunction with these. Now, what I do typically is that I'm looking at these first, all right? I'm looking at the MACD coming down to the zero line and the fact that the ADX has gotten low. I'll go into a little bit more detail on that in a second. And then once, once we're at this point, then I'm going to go and look for something. Actually, a lot of times what happens is it just happens to show up. It's not necessarily something I'm looking for, but as I'm going through and looking at individual stocks, I end up seeing this pattern where the RSI 20 in red holds above the 50 level while the RSI 5 gets a deep oversold rating. It's kind of rare. There's usually only two times this will develop. And um, that is when we get an ABC correction. It'll happen at times. Um, and like it did here. And other times it'll happen during a bear market in a stock that's a very, very strong stock on a relative basis holding up and it's getting pulled down by the market. And it's almost like this is just getting really stretched like a rubber band. And the moment the market bottoms, this snaps back. Uh, so we look for stocks like that during a bear market phase and the decline, something that's holding up really well. Um, but Let's just take a really quick look. Well, actually, what I wanted to do very briefly is just show what's going on in the monthly chart because this is, we make a move to the upside and we get a pullback. And if you notice, the 18 month is now supporting this pullback here. Also notice how the MACD is forming a pinch where it's pinching into the signal line, which is now rising. It was falling during the bear market and then it started rising. And it's almost like this is the trend line. This red line is like the trend line of the momentum. All right. And we're getting little dips in the momentum, the shorter term dips against the trend. So we always want to look for these pinch plays and we get a lower three months of lower highs. And then look at the doji kind of cross or sword bottom there uh, right there at 200, a big round number. So we've got a lot of things lining up on the monthly chart, which is a nice Again, if I'm looking for a home run fat pitch, right, I want to have the monthly in my favor, pulling back nice and orderly with a little doji right at a round number. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. Now, if we go to the weekly chart that has MACD and ADX, on the way up, we want confirmation in MACD and in ADX. We got that. But one of the things I really want to see is the, um, and I'll just show you here, uh, let me pull up the, the ADX reached 55 to the upside. All right. I mean, that is a powerful, powerful move to see this confirming to the upside like this on this strength. All right. We really want to be on the lookout for that. And the reason is, is that when we get strength like that, typically that means after a pullback or a correction, we're going to get another move to the upside. We're going to at least test this high. Linda Rashke refers to this as kind of like a holy grail where we get so strong. There's a very high likelihood they're at least going to come back and test this high. Now, what I have noticed is if we get an extreme reading like 55, all right, then we should expect more of a corrective pattern as opposed to a quick short pullback. A lot of times you'll get the ABC correction that takes place. And instead of holding at the 18, you're going to hold the 40. All right. We hold the area of the 40. And uh, even though this did break the 40, on the next bar, it turned right up. It's never closed below the bar that closed below it. So I don't consider that a true break. And look at what MACD was doing, coming right back down to the zero line. And look at how ADX got low below both moving, uh, both uh, DI lines and all three lines were below 25 after being extreme to the upside. So we've got this combination. Now, typically, and I talk about this in my course, there are four triggers that can be used um, using the uh, MACD and ADX along with the moving averages and trend line analysis. So I go through those in detail, and this would be a trigger one. This is a trigger one in this instance. However, 
If I have an ABC like this that creates a uh, deep oversold reading like we got here, this reached below 30%, and this was right in the area of 50, uh, the RSI 20. So we've got the 20 basically is telling us how strong the trend is. Are we staying above the 50 mark during a pullback? And then the this gives us sort of the timing. Are we getting oversold or not? Now, most times you only need to get this RSI 5 down under 50 to give us a setup. But there are times when you get sort of an extreme. And this is why I like to look for it near the 40 where this gets actually oversold like this. And it's a great combination. And when we have that following a really strong ADX reading to the upside, okay, then we can look for, all, we don't need to play the trigger one. Let me just show you. The trigger one would be breaking this trend line on this day right here, all right? But in this instance, when we have this deep oversold reading in this show in here, we can do a pivot low signal right here, closing above the low bar, which would have been this bar. We could have gotten in pretty early. Now, one of the things I like to make sure is, I don't really want to see the 18 rolling over like that. As long as it moves up and it's sort of flattish, then I'm okay with taking this pattern. I'm okay with this pattern. We want it more flat. If we get kind of a bellowed look where it rolls over, I'm not as interested in this. So the, a the ABC pattern is kind of important. We don't want a real violent decline that's going to cause the 18 to really start turning down in a, in a violent way. Uh, but this is a great combination to look for. First, start with MACD near, near the zero line. Well, first off, we start with confirmation of ADX and MACD on the way up. Then during the corrective pattern, we want ADX to get, you know, it's preferable for it to get oversold. If it's really strong, sometimes it'll just come down to the 25 mark and that's okay. But we need the, AD, uh, the MACD line to be holding the zero. All right. If we have that combination, we can go looking for an RSI buy signal right around the 40 MA. All right. Great combination to be on the lookout for. And this does happen in all time frames. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. So my services as well as my courses and my book can all be found at rablestockresearch.com. Uh, the, the courses, there are three courses now. A new course was just put out uh, a few months ago. Uh, we'll go into a lot of the details that I'm going to talk about on, as I go through and analyze some of these stocks. So uh, take a look if you have an interest. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the QQQ, as I have been doing now for a few months. Uh, it is the leader. Uh, it, while there are some things taking place here that you could start to question that, uh, so we're going to talk about that in a second. But let's just look at uh, one thing I did want to show, and I'm going to zoom in on this chart over here. So I've got um, the uh, zigzag here, all right? And I wanted to show something that ACP does uh that I find to be, uh, I, I make the, I think this indicator is really good. So if you notice, well, the way I have this set up, I'm going to click on this. You can see that I've got the percentages at five, but it has, I, you click on auto percentage and I've got a multiplier of two using the high and low, uh, from the close. So what, what this is basically doing is, uh, I believe, and I haven't actually talked to them, but I have uh, used this in conjunction with other software programs. So I'm pretty sure that what they're doing is you're using the average true range and they're, that's how they're calculating the auto percentage. So if you notice, it's not, it's set to five, but it's actually not at five for the weekly chart. It's at 5.77. Now here's the key. If I switch this to a daily, it goes to 2.61. So it's auto changing the percentage based on the the historical swings going back and given it and making it a lot more realistic so i don't have to go and switch it myself i don't have to have a daily set to two and a weekly set to six or anything like that it does it for me i can even go down to an interday chart and you'll see um, that it's uh, an hourly is at a one percent. So very nice the way this was done. Um, I'm a big fan of using the uh, zigzag uh, as a trend tool uh, for um, seeing crystal clear, seeing the uh, the trend structure. 
All right. So I like to have that chart up in the upper left for the weekly because that's kind of like my main time frame. That's sort of the middle time frame. And I look up at the monthly and I look down at the daily. Now, if you're a shorter term trader, you might want to have the zigzag on the daily and then look down and look up, look at, look up at the weekly, look down at the hourly. However, I'll tell you that if you start to look at a daily chart, you'll see how much how many more zigzags there are. I mean, it's crazy how much more volatile a daily chart is versus a weekly. All right, let's look at the QQQ for analysis, though. Look at what's going on on a relative basis. You see how this had been very, very strong into the middle of last year, and then it's sort of flattened out relative to the S&P. Now we're finally potentially breaking the uh, eight, the uh, 30 week of the uh, relative strength. So something I think we have to keep an eye on, especially if this pushes up. So if we get a move up and it makes a new high and this fails to confirm or if this rel if this uh, moving average line rolls over i think you got to start to get a lot more concerned about some of these big leaders they've shown some signs of deterioration but not to the point of truly breaking down and the same goes for the relative strength now one of the things i also wanted to point out is look at what's going on here we had this big red bar I pointed out last week. Notice how every single bar since that time has stayed inside the range of that big bar. Every one of them. So we're on one, two, three, four, five days since. We have not broken either the low or the high of that bar. And I think it's becoming more and more important to me, especially because when you look at the ADX, before it was showing divergence here where it was failing to go up with the market. Now we've gone sideways and we're getting to the point now where this this has turned into a low ADX condition. MACD is getting a lot closer to the zero line. I mean, this is almost like you've worked off the overbought condition without breaking down. All right. And so you got to start looking at this as a potential breakout play if, in fact, it does turn out. Uh, that it breaks out to the upside. So we've uh, we've spent enough time going sideways. Now, I do think if we take out the low of this bar that we're going to work our way down, probably find support on the weekly. But the, the weekly trend is still OK. I just think we'd end up going through some type of a, a corrective pattern, con consolidation pattern, and we probably see more weakness on a relative basis. All right, let's go and look at the um, the IWM here. So um you know, it, it continues to disappoint in a way. I mean, it just can't seem to get through this relative strength, uh, the uh, moving average of the relative strength and get that line to turn up. We really need that. It turned down back here at the beginning of 2023. And it's been declining ever since. We want the moving average to actually turn up. And I think if we see that, the conditions really strengthen overall for the general market. Now, you can see the price structure has improved. So from a trend standpoint, it has improved. And on a RSI basis, I did want to point out, especially if we can close like this, we're going to set up our first RSI potential setup here, which means that if, the, if we close this way where the RSI 5 is below uh, 50 and the RSI 20 is above, just like I was talking about in the uh, lesson. If we make a higher low where we can we can basically uh, close above the low bar, now all of a sudden I think it strengthens the overall pattern and increases the likelihood that we see better relative strength. Um, and a lot of times that will kick into gear a little bit prior to seeing um, ADX strength uh, on that same time frame. All right, what I want to do is just talk about a couple of um, sector charts that I think look really attractive. Uh, notice the strength of the um, ADX on the weekly. Notice the volume pattern, the improvement here. So this materials uh XLB, it's got a low ADX condition on the monthly and it's showing strength on the weekly after having a low ADX condition here. Um, we've got a lot of strength on the uh, daily chart and we're showing improved relative strength here. So I I'm inclined to want to be a buyer of this area, you know, on a pullback. And obviously we're seeing a lot of strength in uh, some of the uh, basic materials for sure. Uh, certainly some of the commodity related areas that are inside of basic materials. Look at XLE. Um, XLE is showing a lot of strength here. Same kind of style here where we got a zero line um, move to the upside in MACD and Green DI breaking out for the first time in a, in about almost two years now, year and a half. 
All right, so that's a really good sign confirming the price action. Another one that I'd be looking for any kind of a little dip or pullback as a uh, potential opportunity. And then I would also take a hard look at the financials. They got overbought, and I, it just makes sense that they pull back. And the, what I'd be looking for on this is the weekly to come down a little bit closer to the uh, to the 18-week. Look at the strength of the uh, ADX on the move to the upside. Look at the volume pattern. Really good volume coming into this area. What I would be watching for is an opposing trend pattern where the 18 comes down and touches or crosses below the 40 and the MACD works its way back down towards the zero line and probably the ADX drops down below uh, both of the DI lines and below 25. I think if we can get that to take place, we want to start looking really hard at some of the better looking stocks in the financial area. All right, I did get a request uh, for NVIDIA. And so I wanted to go through this because um, I really think I looked at SMCI and NVIDIA. And I, I have to say, when I look at these patterns, especially what's going on on the daily chart and the weekly chart, it doesn't look like a topping formation. All right. Yes, I was looking at this hitting the thousand mark and thinking this is going to blow up and, you know, get a big reversal. But you got to take price action into account. We had this one big red bar, but look at the resulting action from that. We didn't have much follow through. It consolidated. It went up and tested the high. And then we came down and we undercut. We came down and undercut this key low. And look at what happened. It had no follow through whatsoever. And in fact, it's turning up. Now, the market's actually been weak here. And uh, what it looks like to me is the MACD is working off the overbought condition without price really showing a lot of damage being done. And we also had these two strong readings in ADX on the way down, on the way up, no sign of divergence. And now, again, we're working off the overbought condition in both of these oscillators and uh, momentum indicators without having price really showing a lot of deterioration. I think it's actually a little bit more blatant on the SMCI, but both are basically telling me that uh, we've got a strong move to the upside and this is a pullback or a consolidation in an ongoing trend as opposed to a reversal pattern. So what I would be doing is watching this daily chart, especially if these two lines kiss and or crossover and if that comes to play then the macd line will likely be close to the zero line and we can start looking for a new entry for a trade to the upside maybe a move back up to a thousand or something like that so uh something to be on the watch for because it doesn't look like it's rolling over to me all right okay let's start looking at the next uh stock that was uh sent over here uh the next request so uh slca so you know what i mean it's trying it's trying it, it actually had the really strong decline into 2020 tried to show some sign of improvement but look at how quiet it has been since the beginning of 2023 just really small tiny bars relative to what was going on here relative to here i mean look at the difference in the size of the bars here. So to me, this is prepping for a move. This is getting ready to do something. I actually like the fact that it came down and sort of tested this low and undercut this low and had no follow through whatsoever, right? We had this kind of key low back in 2023. Uh, it was also tested in the late 2023. We broke it and had no follow through and then immediately get a run to the upside with improving volume. So these are all kind of encouraging signs, especially when you look at how quiet this has been. A lot of times when you're really quiet like that, you go in the opposite direction. You really want to go first and then make a move to the upside. So starting to see some sign of uh, life here on an ADX basis. But I, I would tell you that um, what I would be looking for is a little bit more improvement on the weekly and then look for the first pullback. And it might do it as it tests this high, come up a little bit more, and then we get some either a pinch play or some kind of a check back that forms a setup on the daily chart. I think that's what I'd be looking for on this one. It does look interesting. Definitely keep it on your watch list. So the Rio... Um, I, I, I'm not all that excited about this at this point. We've got um, essentially a pattern that's kind of wedging in. And, I, I, you know, I do recognize this has, again, gotten very quiet. We're right around the zero line. But we're going to need to see this kind of show some uh, a move with a vengeance through 75. I mean, if it doesn't get through 75, there's just nothing to do here. Uh, we want to get through that level. That was the key. Uh, that was the prior peak. 
Um, there's definitely resistance. We can see it on the uh, zigzag. That was the last key high in the move. We want to see a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. So first thing we want to do is make a new high and then look for a higher low. That's probably what I'd be watching for in this. And I do want to see the relative strength improve as well. So a little bit of a waiting game here. I mean, I don't dislike this pattern. I think there's a lot of support, but I think that you got a little bit of a, a time that you need to um, just be patient right now. Now, Uber's a little bit different. This has shown a tremendous amount of strength. Look at the ADX pattern on the monthly. Look at the volume. You see the volume come into this? It's a lot of strength to the upside, hitting an all-time high. All right. Now, if we go to the weekly chart, we have made um, you know, sort of a breakout play starting with the big green bar. We had a little ABC correction, again, kicked off with another green bar. And then we had a little, just a quick pinch play. Um, little pause, a little uh, bull flag, and look at how it kicked off with the gr big green bar. You see the three green bars? I did a, uh, a few weeks ago, I did a lesson on these, something to really be on the lookout for. So I'm more inclined to think after this has made a move up to 60 on an ADX basis, that maybe this is a little bit more complex. Now, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to do that. And if you want to play this, you can play this pullback and play the opposing trend trigger. I'm just telling you, we've made a pretty extensive move. We've had the breakout play and two pullbacks since then. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if we go through a little bit more of a complex correction now. Either way, there's there's another play coming to the upside, I think, after we go through um, a uh, corrective pattern. So be on the lookout for the pullback to the 18. See if we get a trigger on the daily chart. And it's going to be one of my triggers uh, it looks like it's going to have a little overrun, so you might want to be looking for some kind of a higher low to form as opposed to a trend line break. But you can watch it for that and just keep an eye out for the big green bar. If we get a big green bar on the daily, that probably uh, is uh, worth noting coming back up through the 40. Um, okay, let's take a, a quick look at PayPal because this has been a long time coming. We'll start with the monthly chart. We had this violent move to the downside. We're basically massive exodus. Uh, and then there was so much momentum that it rallied up. And then it finally broke to another new low. But you could start to see the MACD was starting to lift up, even though this is making new lows here. So we've started to see somewhat of a reversal of the momentum. But price was continuing to kind of reverse to the downside. Now we're back up to this 18-month line. All right. So signs of improvement on a momentum basis, but we need to get through the 65, 66, 67 area to truly kind of turn the monthly chart. But again, look at what's taking place on the uh, weekly because this has gone on and has spent a lot of time working its way down without a lot of downside progress. The 80, uh, the MACD is trying to get through the zero line. And if you notice, while we were making new lows here, the ADX really didn't show a lot of strength. Yeah, it did finally get through the 25 line, but almost consider that maybe like a climax play after this divergence, divergence, and then we get one more move to the downside. And I think that was the climax of the move. Um, now we're trying to turn back up through these key lows from uh, 2022. And I think if we can do that, and then again, look for that higher low pattern. I think the number two is really key, meaning not looking for the first entry, but looking for that higher low. You could be setting up something uh, pretty important here. Thanks for watching. If you have any stock requests, send them to stocktalk at stockcharts.com and I'll try and get it in on the next show. Also, uh, my YouTube channel is called Invest Like a Pro. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.